Hey, welcome back y'all. I'm Andre Thompson, the Privileged Bow Hunter. Uh, what I want to do is help y'all get over that anxiety that you get when that big animal comes out. Um, we won't be able to completely cure buck fever, but what you can do is develop some calluses on your mind and in your shot process that'll help you prepare for when that pin seems like it's going above the animal's back, below the animal's belly, in front of it, and behind it, okay? Um, so this is my process. This is how I kind of set up some situations to train my mind that, hey, if I miss or be comfortable in the situation of if, hey, if I miss the arrows in the dirt. But before we get into it, please make sure if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification. Let's go. So all I'm doing is training my mind to still work on that shot process for me. It's grip, bubble, pick a spot to make them drop. That's what I'm saying in my head. Um, you've probably seen Joel Turner's shot process. Um, you may have done his training. Um, all of those things are legitimately real. Um, in the Navy, we do this thing called recalibrating. It's kind of a breathing technique. But whatever you need to do to be okay with there being land there being consequences on either side of that arrow if you miss. Pick a spot, make them drop. Hand, bubble, pick a, drop, pick a spot to make it drop. And then I'm literally just pulling through the shot. That's all I'm doing is trying to execute a good shot, a good break of the arrow. I think what, what happens a lot of times is a lot of hunters get like excess buck fever because they're shooting at this big, huge, like five feet by five foot target. And then they get out there and the pig is whatever size. And like that nervousness has the pin jumping everywhere and they haven't practiced in these conditions at all. And so it's kind of unnerving. It's like, uh, I'll look at it like this. You are, if you only shoot at the, at the big bells, you are literally, it's like riding a bike with training wheels all the time. And then when you go hunting, you're expecting to be able to operate without the training wheels. check it out and then one thing about one thing that there is also about like recording yourself I recommend you guys record yourself so you can see what hitches in your form do you have when you have these uh, conditions set up and then one thing about having that camera out everybody's gonna assume that you're trying to be like famous or have a, a channel or something even if you're just looking at your own form which will add a little bit of angst to what's going on so here we go, 50 yards. I got two flyers. Um, two of them a little high, not really necessarily sure with these two. I'll make sure I mark them to see if it's the same ones, but overall the group, um, it's like a two and a half inch group there um, for the most part. But it's not even about that, right? I'm not here to try to like prove my archery prowess. I'm literally just here trying to get ready for a hunt that I got coming up next week um, on Lanai. Those things are fast. And sometimes um, when you're hunting them, you're kind of in the mindset like, oh, I've been hunting. I've been sitting here all day. Or I've been hunting for two or three days and nothing's come out. And uh, you kind of almost get into that give up feeling or despair feeling where you lose a little bit of faith. And then all of a sudden antlers are 20 yards away and then your heart rate spikes. You need to insulate your mind as best as you can. So at least when you get into, hey, I don't remember how the shot went off, I blacked out, at least your mind has something to rely on with your practice that you've done. Another reason why like it makes sense to really shoot from your block target is 
so a lot of the dots right on the big bells they have really really good contrast like it'll be a black background and a really bright white dot or it'll be a super orange dot or something like that and the only thing you're going to see orange walking through the woods like that is another hunter right so that's not really realistic to be training your eye to shoot at when you're shooting at these block targets a lot of especially if you had them for a while um, the colors have kind of faded so you're shooting at something that's not a super well defined spot that's easy to grab and a lot of times hey you shoot pigs out here um, you're shooting a pig you're probably somewhere where there's a whole lot of overgrowth so not a lot of sunlight getting through um, you need to be able to find like a crease, a, like a, a defining feature of that animal to focus on uh, uh, a crevice or a bend uh, somewhere in the body that you can lock your pin onto as best as possible to shoot at. Um, this target is a good representation of that. It's not all the way as extreme as a blacked out um, pig, but it's, it's a lot better than something that's super bright and easy to aim at and then getting into the woods trying to figure out why you're aiming at the whole animal instead of a spot on the animal and if you're aiming at the whole animal then you're not aiming small then you're going to miss big and you'll probably miss over the whole animal versus being two inches high two inches low left right whatever the case may be so another reason why it makes sense you got to look at another reason why it makes sense to shoot at a target like this versus always at these big bells is because look at how low this target is. Look at how low that target is in comparison uh, to these other targets out here. That The dots, all of those are at perfect best case scenario. But unless you're hunting and your deer starts to levitate, you're not going to get a scenario like that where the vitals are perfect and you can have this perfect archery form so yes it's good to practice at these big bells but honestly guys you guys need to get your block targets out and set it up where your form isn't going to be able to be that perfect think about trying to get through that one shooting lane but you can't move your whole body so you have to check it out i have to this will be perfect scenario but that's literally like five feet over. So now I have to bring that, look how I have to bring that bow down. Bro, that changes your form. That changes how that pin holds on target. And if you haven't felt that before, when that animal comes out, you're going to panic. You gotta insulate yourselves from panicking. I can almost guarantee you that you're not gonna have that perfect shot with the perfect archery form just like this. You have to be okay with this. And what you're doing in that scenario, when your arm is lower, you're literally, hey, you're still going through your mantra, hand, bubble, pick a spot to make them drop. I say pick a spot to make them drop because out here I'm mostly hunting axis deer and I got all those white spots everywhere. So I try to just laser in on one and focus. Like my pin is bobbing, 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 and I'm gonna keep pulling. And generally, it finds its way to the bottom. She didn't change to my good side. <laughs> but I hope these are, these two really, these two tips with a bunch of tangents like wrapped around them makes sense and it helps you kind of prepare a little bit better for your next hunt. Um, we'll get out here and check out this group. It's actually the second group of the day. Um, but if you have not liked yet, I need you to drop a like below. If you have not commented yet, you need to comment below. Let me know if this makes sense to you. Here's the group, guys. Um, once again, not super important on the group. I pulled the, the two that seemed to be a little bit high and I shot it again. Um, and once again, they're all they're in the same um, general vicinity. If you don't know how to spell the channel by now, it's P-R-I-V-I-L-E-G-E-D. We know you know how to spell Bowhunter. We love y'all. Peace.